2024, I want to have this the year where I start voting with my dollars and taking back control of my food, my food budget, my household items, how much money I'm spending on these things, the way I'm shopping in general, things that I care about like nutrition and daily movement and the environment and climate change and all of these things. So enter my 2024 personal goals. All of those things actually tie together really nicely. Groceries, food, and household items are my second largest item in my monthly budgets. And they just happen to be something I'm incredibly passionate about. So for this coming year, when it comes to groceries and food, I'm gonna focus on three things, local, sustainable and zero slash low waste. Now you guys know I've been a plant-based eater for about seven years now. Um, I was strictly vegan for a while, but I don't like to use the V word now. I feel like there's a lot of stigma and negative connotation that tends to come with it. So I just say I'm plant-based. And by that, I just mean that the bulk of my food is plants. And that's because about seven, eight years ago, when I learned about industrial agriculture and how it was massively impacting the environment and fueling climate change and just giving us not the best nutritional output. And once you know things, you can't unknow them. So I just wanted no part of industrial agriculture. However, in recent years, I've learned about regenerative agriculture practices and how farmers are using animals to improve the quality of the soil and the environment, as well as provide a meat and dairy end product that is substantially better for you than what you get from industrial agriculture. And a lot of times, not always, it's worth research, but a lot of time, you know, they're not pumping their animals full of the antibiotics and all of the gross shit that you don't want or need in your body. And they're in doing that in a cooperative way that's also helped building a strong environment and healthy soils and all of the great things that the earth needs. On top of that, I now understand the importance of local. Because even if you do say to yourself, you know what, I want to eat plant-based or, or whatever to not participate in industrial agriculture, there's also another component to that that can be incredibly taxing on the environment, like shipping that food all over the place. A lot of our produce here in the Northeast, I think in the US in general, comes from California and Florida and the Midwest. It takes fossil fuels to get the foods to you. Generally, those things are bred for transport and storage, not necessarily taste or nutrition nutritional quality. And if you've ever had a grocery store tomato, you know. So when you opt to shop local and seasonal, you eliminate a large amount of fossil fuels that are used to truck all of this food around. So that is gonna be a huge goal of mine for 2024 is shopping locally as I can. Now, of course, middle of January here in New England, it is snowing out quite a bit today. So nobody's growing anything outside of a hothouse, hoop house or greenhouse right now, however, I live in New England. I feel like there's a large enough population in New England of people that do care about this shit that I should have no problem feeding myself pretty dang locally. In my town, we have farmer's markets right through the winter and all of these local farms come and they bring their grass-fed, hormone-free, antibiotic-free meat and dairy products, but also a lot of family farms around here do have greenhouses and high tunnels and hoop houses and things that you can grow in throughout the winter. So there's actually farm stores near me that sell local lettuces, kales, spinach, tomatoes, melons, potatoes, carrots, these things are available to me locally within a half hour drive. It's a little bit more grocery planning on my part, but I can tell you right now, I'm just a couple weeks into this and I'm going to the grocery store way less. It's too soon to see how the cost comparison is gonna shake out, but I already know that going to the grocery store less cuts down on those impulse buys that add up over time. And then of course, as we do get into the growing season, more and more backyard farmers just set up their little veg stands at the end of their driveways, and I hit those up all the time. Plus there's a ton of you pick farms around. There's so many options. And I've even signed up to be on the wait list for my town's community garden that is three minutes down the road from me. I don't know how hopeful I am for that to turn out. 
And here at my apartment, I don't exactly have a plot to put a garden in. I've tried to grow some tomatoes on my front step and the squirrels eat every single tomato just before it's ripe. Let's go take a look at what I have done right now in the dead of winter. Guys, this is Bernard, the banana plant tree. Sorry if you got excited and thought I had another pet. Nope, it's Bernard. Ugh in his sad little root bag with a uh, cardboard cat protection because if you guys have cats you get it um but this is bernard he is a cavendish dwarf banana tree he's been with me since 2019. why did i buy this i live in new england what but anyway i love bananas and <laughs> bananas are incredibly tolerant of of course dry soil as well as being root bound, they do not mind at all about growing in a tight container. And since this is a dwarf variety, they actually do just fine in containers because they don't get huge like normal banana trees. So this is not his best environment, obviously. Poor Bernard, he's had a rough life. I bought him with the hopes that I would have a greenhouse someday. I know I will, it's just a matter of when, but anyway, that's Bernard, hello Bernard. And then below Bernard, cat grass. Uh, we have a constant rotation of cat grass in this household. They get up here and snack on that all the time. But most importantly, <laughs> there are two more plants here. And in the corner is one more plant pot. That one in the back has tomatoes in it. Two different varieties. One are sweet 100s. They're a small cherry tomato variety and also in there, I threw some seeds from a tomato I got at the grocery store, which real quick, again, I'm in New England. I'm kind of lucky uh, that people care about these things, but these are from Maine. So they're grown from not far away. They're not right in my community, but the main border is maybe eight miles away. So I don't think they're from too far and they are the most delicious because let me tell you, if you're getting a tomato from California and you're in New England, it's not going to taste good. But so these are these are good and these are not in plastic packaging. These are a very small cardboard. So when I do buy grocery store tomatoes, I get these um, Backyard Farms cocktail tomatoes. So I actually planted a few of these seeds and I've sprouted them before. I just um, got too leggy because there wasn't enough light. But now that it's winter time and the sun's lower in the sky, I get more direct sunlight in my south facing windows now. So I'm hoping that'll be better for the tomatoes. But in these other two pots, uh, let's see, this one is all lettuce. And then this one is herbs. I've done chives, rosemary, parsley, and thyme in there. Um, we'll see what sprouts. This is just me scratching my gardening itch. I'm not, uh, hopeful for any kind of big abundance out of those plant pots let me tell you right now but you never know now do i think planting things in my windowsill is going to be the thing that saves me absolutely not but it can help drastically if i can get those lettuces to grow that is huge greens are so plastic intensive at the grocery store they almost always come in either a plastic bag or some kind of protective plastic tray and then they're fragile because they were picked or who knows where they were trucked from so how who knows how many days ago they were picked and it's just they're friggin expensive <laughs> now that i am in the dead of winter seasonality is a little bit more tricky however what I can be focusing on is root vegetables, potatoes, carrots, onions, turnips, rutabagas, squashes. Okay, squashes, not a root vegetable, but <laughs> the things that are great for cold storage because all of these farms at their farmer's markets and at the farm stores a little bit away, root vegetables. They definitely grew them and they definitely still have them available for me to buy. I don't need to be buying potatoes that were shipped in from Kansas or wherever. So at this time, again, I don't know how the gardens, the garden plot situation is gonna play out or what I'm gonna be able to grow here in my windowsills. Time will tell, but I'm gonna do my best to focus on local and seasonal produce as much as I can. Now, of course, there's things in my grocery budget that I'm just not gonna be able to get locally. Coffee, olives, sugar, flour. However, I have at least two grist mills that are relatively close to me and so they also sell their milled sugars and flours and other grains at the different farm markets and the farm stores 
how low? Yes, those things are a little bit more expensive probably than the grocery store items, but at this point in time, it's just me. I don't have dependents or anyone else I'm shopping for, and I have wiggle room. And instead of using that extra wiggle room to eat out or order delivery or whatever I've been doing, <laughs> I can instead be better about voting with my dollars and focusing on spending a little bit more for a little bit better quality, things that are more local and support my local community. For the things that I can't get local, this is where zero or low waste might come into play. There are a few options near me, including a Whole Foods and some other smaller chain zero waste refill stores that sell bulk dry goods. Yes, I have options, but it's, it's not gonna be perfect. I'm not gonna be perfect. I'm not trying to be perfect. I want this to be a slow progression over the year, the course of the year. For things that I can't buy local, seasonal, or I need something in between visits to the farmer's market, um, then yeah, I'm gonna have to be hitting the grocery store. Even when I am making those grocery store purchases, I'm going to be thinking still locally. I think almost every piece of produce in my grocery store tells you where it comes from. Maybe not specifically, but it says it's a product of the US or a product of Canada or a product of Mexico. So if I can't get something locally in my community, then I'm going to be focusing on, well, how local can I get it? I'm obviously going to be prioritizing US and Canada. And in fact, some Canada sources are actually going to be closer to me than some US sources, like things in California. It's just gonna be something I evaluate as I go item by item. I'm super excited to see how this shakes out financially. Will I be saving money by shopping more local, seasonal, planned, and intention-based trips? We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. And luckily, I've been tracking my groceries and food budget for years, so I'm super excited to see as the months go, am I saving money or not? So stay tuned. Now this next item is not necessarily a budget-based item, but it's something I want to continue in 2024 for personal reasons, and that is composting. Yes, I live in an apartment and no, I don't have a compost pile out back. I save my compost scraps in the freezer. I take all of my food waste to the commercial composting at the town transfer station, which is, I don't know, four or five minutes away. Yes, it's a pain. That's the only reason I need to go there. It does add an extra thing to do in my week, but I just tack it on to when I'm leaving the house to run an errand anyway. Composting is so critical. Our, the soil health on this whole planet has just been depleted by industrial agriculture practices. And it's sad, this world needs every single person composting and putting that nutrition back in the soil so that we can get it back in the foods that we're eating. Because right now, the nutritional value of a tomato of today does not have as much nutrition as the tomato of yesteryear. That's just a cold hard fact of where we're at. And composting is the only thing that alleviates that as well as, you know, regenerative agriculture practices. So I'm here to support those farms and also I'm here to compost every scrap of my veggies, which I'm, again, it's a pain in the butt, but it's something I wholeheartedly believed in, believe in. I'm gonna keep that going for 2024. Okay, so let's talk about household items now. Household items are in my groceries and food budget and I just want to be more, environmentally aware of my household items. I'm not necessarily looking to save money on them. I don't spend a lot of money on them anyway, but I wanna be better about them. And what I mean by that is just less plastic packaging. So like I said, I have health food and bulk stores near me. Well, a lot of these stores also carry cleaning ingredients, things like bulk vinegar and washing soda and OxyClean, Castile soap, borax, all the things that you need to make up your homemade cleaning products. <laughs> so I've been making my own laundry soap over a decade now. I just do a dry mix of borax washing soda and oxyclean in like a one to one to one ratio and I throw a scoop of that in my wash. I can buy all three of those at bulk stores and save from plastic packaging on ever having to buy those things again, which granted borax and washing soda come in like cardboard boxes, but again, it's just waste I don't need to buy. Maybe they're more expensive that way, but it's not gonna be my mu by much, which I will find out by the way, and I'll come back and let you guys know. But even if it's not cheaper, 
Again, I'm voting with my dollars for 2024. And so I want to vote for the things that I believe in, like things that are environmentally friendly, plastic free. So I'm more than happy to go support a local bulk store and buy the goods off of them instead of buying it at Walmart for a little bit cheaper. But then I have more plastic and I'm supporting Walmart. As of right now, I'm on my last bottle of Mrs. Meyers cleaning concentrate and I bought that concentrate to keep refilling the spray bottle that you just dilute it down with water and that's an environmentally better option than just buying the diluted down spray bottle each time you go however when that runs out which to be perfectly frank it might be several years before like my all-purpose cleaner runs out which is cool but when it does we're going bulk. There's so many easy DIY cleaners out there. I, th I think we can go a little too far with the DIY uh, health and beauty product things, but I think cleaning agents, it's pretty good. Like we all know vinegar and baking soda are kind of miracle workers for everything. So, and they're very cheap. Plus you're not dumping hazardous chemicals down the drain. Now let's talk about personal care items. <laughs> This is also not really a big uh, item in my budget, but something else I lump into my grocery food household budget is my personal care items. I love the organic refill shampoos and conditioners that you can get at health food stores. I think they smell so wonderful. Yeah, they're not the glitzed out whamadine smells of the drugstore shampoos and conditioners, but they're just gentle and beautiful. And I just find myself gravitating towards that kind of stuff, the older I get. I've been using uh, bulk refill liquid shampoos and conditioners for a couple years, as well as bar shampoos and conditioners. I've been using those for probably a decade now. At the zero waste bulk stores, I can find dip shampoo and conditioner bars, and I have been loving, like 10 out of 10 for the hair. Dip whatever you're doing, mm. Mm, mm, mm. And they're not zero waste. They do come in a little cardboard box to protect them, but that's at least way more recyclable than a plastic option. Those options are not always necessarily the cheaper option. I understand that. But for me, I have the few extra dollars in my budget to make the environmentally friendly choice in that scenario. And to be perfectly frank, I have not even compared those prices either. So that's something I sh I'll do and get back to you guys on. Just because I say that the zero waste option is more expensive, but I don't actually know that. No more single use plastic shampoo and conditioner bottles. I do have a few skeletons remaining in the shower. And as soon as I use these up, I, I want these to be the last single-use plastic shampoo and conditioner I ever have to buy, hopefully. When it comes to other things like body wash, hand soap, and dish soap, I've been buying those at zero waste stores for the last couple years as well, so I'm just gonna keep that going. For hand soap, I just use Castile soap, liquid Castile soap, and I dilute it down with water, and I bought a foaming hand soap pump to go on top of a mason jar, which I have a million of. Yes, it's plastic, but it was a one-time purchase plastic that I hope will stay good for years and years and years and then eliminate a bunch of different hand soap bottles out of the landfill. And in the shower, I choose to use loofah or little hemp-based, um, you know, body scrub things instead of the plastic ones at the grocery store because microplastics, y'all. If you don't know about microplastics, just Google that rabbit hole for a minute and it's very eye-opening. When it comes to face wash, if any of you out there have found a good face wash that is either in a bar or just a refill option, something that is zero waste but works well for you, please let me know down in the comments. Um, this is my skin, I think it's pretty normal. I don't think I have oily or dry skin. I don't know, but I am looking for a good face wash option. I did try a bar once that had like coffee bean bits in it for exfoliating, but man, it was so thick. I feel like I could have just scooped my fingers in some coconut oil and just went Pfft. I don't know that it was coconut oil. I have no idea, but I just it just left such a thick film on my face. I, nope. So again, it's trial and error, but if you do have any good face wash suggestions, let me know down below. Now, the last category I wanted to touch on is electronics because electronics are incredibly environmentally intensive. There's so much 
mining and extraction to get all of the little bits and bobs and all of those little tiny computer pieces on the inside of every single electronic device. In my home, I think I have my TV, my laptop, my extra monitor, the camera, this guy. This is an iPhone 10. I am not that person who buys the latest and greatest iPhone every year. I think that is so wasteful. <laughs> this thing is doing just fine. Yes, I would like to upgrade. Yes, I have complaints about the camera. Is it life and death? Absolutely not. I keep the electronics pretty minimal, but also if I do buy a new iPhone, I will absolutely first and foremost look at a refurbished, slightly older model. I feel like we have a tendency to really get carried away when it comes to electronic devices, especially as technology just continues to advance. We are constantly feeling left behind with the older model. I guess it's just not something that I prioritize to give too much of a shit about. Now I wanna talk about shopping in general. <laughs> you guys know I've been on a low buy year for 2023 and I'm keeping that going for 2024. I have a personal spending budget of 300 bucks a month on personal items. However, I can do better. <laughs> and I'm not even necessarily saying I can do better than the 300. I just mean I can do better with my shopping practices overall. The main thing that's gonna help me with that is by focusing on used or secondhand items instead of something new. We've been on this insane trajectory of making it easier and easier and easier to buy things nowadays with the buy now, one click. It is just so easy to spend money. And obviously for a reason, <laughs> there's tons of marketing research that goes into advertising and how to decrease the barrier between you and buying the product that they're offering. Ad after ad after ad, and they know what they're doing, they know how to get you, and they know how to get you to click on buy now with one click. And don't even get me started with the buy now, pay later options. I want to eliminate all that crap from my life. If I want something, not only do I want to have a waiting period to really think on it and make sure that's what I want, I'm also going to say, you know what, can I buy this secondhand used on Facebook Marketplace? Can I get this locally in my community by someone who doesn't want it anymore? If I do want or need something, chances are pretty dang good. I don't need to be paying full price and supporting particular corporations. I can probably find it gently used in my community or at least a very reasonable alternative option. So prioritizing used and secondhand is not only going to help my budget, but also going to help my environment. So I'm not supporting these corporations that don't give a shit about people, they just give a shit about their bottom dollar. Tapping out of that game. You guys may have noticed every upload nowadays has no more affiliate links in my video descriptions because I just don't want to keep supporting the 1% and continue to pour wealth into particular individuals that have so much they don't know what to do with it. So now they just wanna, maybe we'll go to the moon or whatever, like I just, I don't want to support any more of that crap. Share the wealth, you know? <laughs> but that's what 2024 is going to look like for me. Voting with my dollars to support my local economy, support my health, because we all know health is the ultimate wealth. Continue making decisions that align with my principles of a healthy environment and trying my best to not contribute any further to climate change and destruction of this planet and just figure out the path that works the best for me and that's aligned with my goals and principles while I do find my way to financial independence. It's going to be a long slog, but I want this journey to be meaningful to me and have purpose and passion and all of these things I am super passionate about. So now that I have alleviated some of my focus on finances, away, I can focus on things that I really, really care about in addition to finances because it's always going to be about money, unfortunately. It's the world we live in. So let's just do the best we can in a way that means is meaningful for us. Again, let me know down in the comments if you guys have any face wash suggestions. Feel free to leave any of your DIY cleaning products down in the comment section so we can have a nice little resource for anyone who might be interested in getting started with these kinds of things. I myself would be interested in your recipes if you have any good ones. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. And I cannot wait to continue sharing this journey with you guys. I will see you soon.